Temperatures are on the rise worldwide. That means in homes, offices, and factories, there's more and more need for cooling. And that means more and more air conditioners. Cooling systems not only use a lot of energy, they may also contain fluorinated hydrocarbons, known as HFCs. If the devices are not operated or disposed of properly, those compounds can escape into the atmosphere. HFCs are potent greenhouse gases with up to 4,000 times the climate warming potential of CO2. Refrigeration systems already account for 8% of worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. They are making global temperatures rise and further stoking demand for cooling devices. It's a vicious circle. This is Kalf in southwestern Germany. The half-timbered facades bear witness to the history of the town. The market square is lined with houses dating from the 17th century. But there are not only signs of past economic activity here, Kalf also houses a data center, a node in a thousand kilometer long fiber optic network. Here in the basement of the Sparkasse Bank, the computer servers need to be cooled. Our chiller devices operate without any greenhouse gases, so we have climate neutral cooling. To ensure climate neutral cooling, the bank runs its cooling system without hydrofluorocarbons and with great efficiency. With the help of these heat exchangers, the coolant water is chilled by the air temperature. If the outside temperature is below 12 degrees Celsius, the coolant water transfers energy via heat exchangers directly to the chilled water cycle in the server room. That means no further power is required for cooling. This free cooling enables 18 server racks in Kalf to be kept at their optimal operating temperature on many days of the year. We can operate using free cooling for much of the year, around 5,000 hours. That way we save all the energy that we would have otherwise had to invest in mechanical chilling. And it is absolutely worth it. Many companies and government agencies not only have their own servers, but also maintain redundant or backup systems outside their buildings. They often entrust their data to local providers like the Sparkasse Bank in Kalf. As a result, Germany has thousands of small server rooms that need to be cooled without warming the climate. Generally, the water temperature required for cooling a server room may not be higher than 18 degrees Celsius. And when the outside temperature rises above 12 degrees, the temperature gap is no longer large enough for free cooling. When the temperature rises in Kalf, these special chiller machines are deployed. In the interest of climate neutrality, the devices do not use HFCs as coolants. Only water circulates in their interiors, with a global warming potential of exactly zero. The new technology has another distinguishing feature too. The coolant does not circulate at high pressure, as is usual in conventional air conditioning systems. Instead, the water flows in the special cooling modules at low pressure. In the lower part of the module, the water that has cooled the server racks enters at a temperature of 26 degrees Celsius maximum. Because the pressure is so low, just 60 millibars, the water immediately begins to boil and part of it passes into the gas phase. This removes heat from the still fluid water, which now cooled to 16 degrees Celsius, flows back towards the server to chill it. The gaseous water in the evaporator is drawn into the veined rotor, which makes up to 88,000 rotations per minute. This serves to compress the water vapor to around 140 millibars. 
During this process, the temperature rises to 180 degrees Celsius. The heated water vapor flows into the so-called condenser. Liquid water cooled by the outside air flows into this device from below. It is at a temperature between 10 and 40 degrees Celsius, depending on the time of year. The hot water vapor condenses immediately, heating the water to 40 to 45 degrees. The heated water flows back outwards and can release its heat to the air outside. In this way, the cooling module essentially couples two water cycles with one another. The cooled water cycle, which releases heat to the outside air via the heat exchanger, and the chilled water cycle that cools the server room. Heat is removed from the system through the simple evaporation of water at low pressure. In the case of the bank in Kalf, two such cooling modules are linked in what's called a cascade. Depending on demand, they can provide a cooling capacity of 20 to 45 kilowatts. The rotational speed of the rotor, which produces the low pressure, is continuously variable, permitting the device to supply the power needed at any moment. This saves additional energy. Ultimately, this technology can generate chilled water temperatures between 16 and 22 degrees Celsius. This is a temperature range that is perfect for cooling servers and buildings as well as for industrial applications. And industry has a huge need for process cooling. German companies have countless machines running every day. Many of them need to be cooled to a constant temperature. For example, the 50 injection molding machines used by the Gebrüde Schwarz company in the southwestern German town of Rottweil. If the cooling failed, all 50 machines would come to a standstill in about two hours. Reliable and constant cooling of the machines is vital for the company's production. Plastic granules are fed into the injection molding machine through a hopper or funnel onto an extruder screw shaped like an elongated snail. It transports the material to the mold while heating it to 300 degrees Celsius. Under a pressure of up to 2,000 bar, the hot molten plastic is injected into the mold. Water flows through special tubes into channels in the mold to cool the plastic so that it solidifies within seconds. The plastic parts produced here include fan wheels for cooling truck motors, as well as other kinds of fans, housings for monitors used in health technology, and for special sensors. To keep production going, the company has a cold water reservoir in the basement under the production area. The coolant water for the injection molding machinery flows through here and has to be kept at a constant temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Two chillers keep the water bath cooled. Here too, it is possible to use a heat exchanger to establish direct contact between the cold water circuit for the reservoir and the cooling water cycle that exchanges heat with the air outside. So when the ambient temperature is below 12 degrees Celsius, the water temperature can be lowered without requiring any additional energy. This efficient use of free cooling reduces the company's electricity needs by around 250,000 kilowatt hours per year. We made this investment, and given the rising energy prices, we will probably recoup our entire investment in two or three years. Looking back, it was absolutely the right decision.
When the ambient temperature is above 12 degrees Celsius, the cooling system can reach the required cooling capacity with a power of not more than 120 kilowatts. And, like the cooling system in Kalf, it only uses water as a coolant. The problem is that so far, only a cooling range of 16 to 22 degrees Celsius can be achieved. The technology is useful in many areas, but the manufacturer of the cooling module wants to expand its range of application by combining it with carbon dioxide as a refrigerant. We are currently working with other companies in the field of cooling technology to realize a combination of CO2 refrigerators with water cooling systems in cascade form. So we're supporting refrigeration technology with temperatures of minus 30 or minus 40 degrees. This is how it would work. First, a cooling system using water as a coolant produces a water temperature of 16 degrees Celsius. An additional refrigerator, using CO2 as a coolant, then achieves temperatures well below the freezing point of water. That expands the range of possible applications. And if the CO2 refrigerant is captured from the atmosphere, then that makes the system climate neutral as well. If renewable or green electricity is used to run the system, the entire cooling process will be climate neutral. The Gebrüder Schwarz company has plans to run its cooling devices mainly on solar power, harvested on its own rooftop. The new technology spares resources, not only thanks to the highly efficient free cooling. Every year, hundreds of thousands of tons of hydrofluorocarbons are manufactured for traditional compression refrigeration systems these substances have an enormous global warming potential. The new technology can eliminate the need for such compounds, and that would help break at least one of the vicious circles of climate change. <laughs>